What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, what I wanna show you is something that I saw today. A customer brought their uh, commercial zero turn in and he thought that the engine was completely locked up. And after I was talking with them, he said, you know, it ran fine. Um, and then they went to go start it the next day. It just wouldn't turn over. And I thought that was kind of weird. I said, it's probably not locked up. It could be a few other issues going on. And if you guys have seen some of my other videos showing like where I compare, I, sh I go to some of the dealers that I sell um, some of my products to. Um, I've been comparing some of the different brands of mowers. And one thing that I always look at is how that rear guard comes up and protects the um, intake manifold or the, um, you know, the, the carburetor. Or this one right behind me, it has a rubber hose. Um, some of them have like a plastic um, air housing, air filter housing, kind of like an intake manifold. And sometimes that will break. And I like when these mowers have a good protection, um, some type of protection guard for that. So I'm gonna show you the footage from today, but first real quick, let me show you this mower here. Um, this one has, this rubber and so if something hits it it's very flexible now a lot of other mowers like the Kohler that I'm going to show you today um, I'm, that I'm about to show you has a similar um, air filter housing however it the manifold comes down the plastic cover and goes right into the carburetor and the problem with that is that can break and what will happen is a lot of times that will um, let dust and dirt get into the, um, into the engine. But in this case, what happened was water got into it. So they left it out overnight. It rained. Water got down in, into the carburetor, into the engine. Completely filled up one of the cylinders. And what I had to do was remove the spark plugs and rotate the motor. Um, let me just go ahead and show you right now. So here's that plastic air filter housing, and I see these break often. I don't like that design. I've already gotten most of the water out, but I'm going to rotate this motor, and you can see a little bit of water coming out of there. You know, a lot of times when people think that their engine has locked up, um, it could be either they're getting... Uh, they have a bad starter, so they're hearing that starter clunking noise, um, and they think that the engine has locked up. It's, you know, it might be something um, similar to what you know we're talking about here, where fuel has dumped in. You know, maybe the fuel shutoff valve has let fuel fill up the cylinder, um, or like in this case, the water has gotten in there. Another common thing is the bearings on the uh, clutch could be worn out, locked up, and sometimes that will give you a, um, a, a false indicator that the engine's locked up. It's not allowing the um, crankshaft to turn. So on this one, I went ahead and I wanted to look just to verify that the clutch was okay. And of course, um, a lot of these you know, commercial landscapers they don't take good care of their equipment. Um, they have their own maintenance team and just things are a mess. So let me show you what I found. So I go to look at the clutch and the anti-rotation stud has broken off of the clutch and the bolt has been rounded off. So the bearings feel, do feel a little bit bad, but they're not locked up. However, I'm going to have to use my grinder here to remove this bolt since it's rounded off. First thing I'm going to do is use this slicer wheel and slice the head of that bolt. Then I'm going to finish it off and grind it on down with this flat disc. And it should uh, come out pretty easily once I get that head of that bolt out or ground away. Hopefully. Uh, the bolt, the threads are not seized up hard into the crankshaft, but you know, I'll have plenty of bolts sticking out of the crankshaft 
once I get this cut away and get that clutch removed. So now that I've cut most of that head of that bolt away, I'm gonna switch over here to my um, flat disc here and grind away. And as I grind this away, I'm gonna show you, as I dig down into it, you can see the um, imprint of the hex head. I'm gonna take the camera here and show you right before I finally ground all of it away. You can see that hex head there. Now I'm going to finish grinding. Take the remainder of that bolt head away. And all of it will be left with, with is a perfectly round stud of the bolt. Now we'll have to replace the bolt, obviously. Replace this washer. And I could reuse this clutch if it wasn't damaged, but this one in particular has been damaged from spinning around and it has rough bearings. So now that you can see, all I'm left with is a perfectly round stud. So this clutch should just slip right off as long as it's not too corroded onto the crankshaft. I'm just gonna bump it here and slip right off. Now that, now that the tension is off of this stud, see how easily it backs out? Luckily for me, it wasn't corroded in there, but now that that tensioners are released, shouldn't have a problem removing that remainder of that bolt. All right, so now I've installed a new battery and now it's time to try to get this engine started. I've removed the top half of that broken air filter housing and you can see right here, we've got a lot of dirty gunk. I don't want that to get into the carburetor while trying to crank this thing over. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some WD-40 into these cylinders on both sides and let that start displacing that water. And later on, as after I've cleaned the water out of the carburetor and cleaned that little bit of intake, cleaned the gunk out of that, I'm gonna crank everything over before I put the spark plugs back in and then we'll crank this motor up. But first I'm gonna remove this broken section here. And here's our carburetor, it's all gunked up. Dirt, and water. Um, I've removed that little choke linkage there. And then you have this other linkage here. And so I'm gonna carefully remove that. Now once I have that removed, uh, this particular model I have to remove this plate because I got to get those little, um, you know, it, it'll hit these fuel shutoff solenoids. So I have to remove this black plate that has two bolts on each side of the valve covers. And also to remove that plate, I got to remove those little um, plates that are going down to the muffler. All right, now that I can finally get that carburetor completely off, I'm gonna remove this fuel shutoff solenoid on the back here, at the lower side, and drain all the water out. I've already used a wrench to loosen that up, and you can see me dumping out all that water. Now I'm gonna take my compressed air and just clean all this out, spray it up with some WD-40, use the compressed air and get it all nice and clean then reinstall it. So now that I've got it all clean, I'm going to reinstall this, put the fuel sh shutoff solenoid back into position. So I'm gonna crank over the motor and put some air into the intake as I cranked it over there and just reinstall the carburetor. Make sure you have those uh, fuel shutoff valves plugged back up reinstall these linkages carefully make, just take your time make sure you're doing it all right reinstall this plate and all these bolts here I'm gonna go ahead and put that intake back on I've cleaned it all out but it gives me the right spacing to tighten up the bolts 
and now I'm turning it over, blowing out all that WD-40 and water. Now I'm reinstalling some fresh spark plugs, and it's time to crank it up. All right, so what that is, that's water that was in the muffler and we're burning it out of there right now. So I'm gonna let it warm up. And it does sound a little bit weird with having the air filter not installed. That's why it's making that um, awkward noise. As you can see here, as I kind of put my hand over it, it kind of gets rid of that noise. And just to temporarily test this unit out, I put some electrical tape around the edge of that broken seam. And before I test it too much, I want to check all my oil levels, make sure they're good. There was no water in that engine oil. And before I take it out back into our test field, I want to make sure this battery is charging properly. I'll put a link down in the description of a video showing how to check your mower's charging system. This was looking pretty good, so I'm good to go. So luckily uh, for this customer, the engine was fine after I drained all the water, got the water out of the cylinders, and got the water, drained the water out of the carburetor, um, displaced that water with some WD-40. WD stands for water displacement. 40 is the 40th formula that worked. It's great stuff. Um, blew it all out with the air compressor and uh, put some new spark plugs in there. Made sure I had some good fresh fuel. Made sure the engine oil was good. Cranked it right up and as you saw it was burning out water out of that was just already had leaked past into the exhaust. But I ran that motor uh, for about an hour. It sounded fine. You know, is that good for it? Letting water get into it? Absolutely not. Um, will that speed up the wear? Probably. It probably uh, maybe corroded or rusted something, but for right now, it's better than, you know, might as well use that motor for as long as it'll last at this point um, instead of replacing it. Go ahead and get the use out of it. So anyway, I hope this video helps you guys out. Um, these are, things are a lot more simple than what you might think, but you know, you got to kind of just go through, eliminate, you know, is it the starter? Is it the clutch? What else is going on? Um, what's funny is sometimes people come in and they think that they have a catastrophic failure and it ends up not being the case. And then sometimes people come in and they think they have just a simple little issue. Oh, just change the oil and everything. It'll solve my issue that, you know, Meanwhile, they have a connecting rod that's broken. So anyway, hope you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I have more videos like this coming soon, guys. Thank you for watching.